Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that, and last time, we discussed the compassion and service of Jesus for those in need. Today, we'll talk a little about how Jesus responded to his critics. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? That they might accuse him. But he said to them, What man shall there be among you that hath one sheep, and if the same fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not take hold on it and lift it up? How much better is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do a good deed on the Sabbath days. Matthew twelve ten to 12 And behold, some of the scribes said within themselves, He blasphemeth! And Jesus, seeing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Whether is easier, to say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? Matthew 9, 3-5 Often Jesus was accused by people who weren't actually interested in what he had to say. Instead, they wanted to be able to make some kind of accusation against him to hurt his public image or to get him in trouble with the law. Because their goal was to sway the public or get rumors going, they generally made these attempts in very public places, and Jesus refuted them publicly, and often while performing healings as well, as he did in both of these cases. He knew what their reactions would be, and he didn't back down from speaking unpopular truths in public, or from doing the right thing because of those reactions. Like Jesus, we also shouldn't back down from saying and doing what's right when dishonest, evil people pressure us to do so. And some of the Pharisees said to him, Why do you that which is not lawful on the Sabbath days? And Jesus answering them said, Have you not read so much as this? What David did when himself was hungry and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God and took and ate the bread of proposition and gave to them that were with him, which is not lawful to eat but only for the priests? And he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Luke 6, 2-5 The Pharisees criticized Jesus and the disciples for eating corn from the cornfields on the Sabbath, and of course, there wasn't anything wrong with what they were doing. Once again, they do this out in public, and once again Jesus proves them wrong in public, this time by citing an example from the scriptures. This kind of tactic only really works against those who try to keep up a public image of holiness, but it is good to know the scriptures and what they have to teach, whether you plan to use it as a counter-argument or not. And the high priest rising up said to him, Answerest thou nothing to the things which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. Matthew 26, 62-63a And when he was accused by the chief priests and ancients, he answered nothing. Matthew 27, 12 These last two verses show a different kind of response to the critics of Jesus, and there's a reason for this. In these two cases, Jesus is being interrogated by the chief priests and their followers and soldiers, these are people who have been opposing Jesus this whole time, and have demonstrated again and again that they will absolutely not take his words seriously. What, then, is the purpose of responding to them? There are no people to sway by refuting their claims, no minds to change or souls to save by responding to this kangaroo court ginned up by the chief priests and Pharisees, so Jesus is silent. And it's not as though he doesn't have good answers to their questions. His silence is only temporary, and he responds to their accusations against him after this, but only when they command him to, or when he's talking to someone else, like Pilate. So Jesus didn't let his critics impede his decision to do or say what's right, refuted his critics publicly when they approached him publicly, and used his knowledge of history, morality, and the scriptures to disarm the positions of those who opposed him. However, he preferred to remain silent when they criticized him in private, and if a person isn't going to listen to what you have to say, regardless, why not save your breath? It's a good policy. Next time, 
Jesus' reactions to dishonesty. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.